Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie brings us to the desert, where a gang of youths dressed in prison uniforms are digging holes under the hot sun. A child named Barfbag can't tolerate the hard job, and is bitten on the leg by a rattlesnake to get out of it. There's a young guy named Stanley Yelnots. A pair of sneakers fall on his head, knocking him off his feet. Since the boy's family is working on a cure for stinky feet, he decides to bring the nasty shoes home. On the way, he is apprehended by cops, and accused of stealing a famous baseball player's sneakers at a charity event. The cops take the youngster to his parents, who are startled to find a variety of shoes in every corner of the residence. The cops leave the residence, convinced that the child is nothing more than a shoe fanatic, who stole the celebrity's footwear. The weird family believes that all of the men in their family are cursed, which is why Stanley Jr. has had another unpleasant occurrence happen to him. He is transferred to a detention camp called Camp Green Lake, by court order, where he must work for 18 months. He meets the warden at the camp, who tells him to address him as Mr. Sir. He quickly informs the boy that there is no use in fleeing the camp, because there is nothing but desert for hundreds of miles, and not a single source of water. Attempts to flee will result in death from venomous reptile bites and predator claws. Stanley is given prisoners clothing and a shovel, and every day, from dawn until sunset, he will have to dig holes in the desert. He is introduced to the other boys in the squad, by a correctional camp psychologist known as Mother. The teenagers only answer to their monikers, X-ray, armpit, squid, zigzag, magnet, and zero. Zero is the youngest, and acquired his moniker because he is always silent. Stanley joins the group in place of Barfbag, who was bitten by a rattlesnake earlier, and the boys initially dismiss him. Stanley discusses his admission to the troubled teen camp over lunch. He was falsely accused of stealing Clyde Livingston's footwear, which he later donated to an orphanage. Hearing the youngster's account, Zero breaks the silence for the first time, and asks Stanley if the sneakers had red crosses on them, which the boy confirms. Stanley remembers his father's stories about their great-grandfather, Stanley Yelnots I, at night. He is the source of their family curse. He had previously made a fortune in the stock market, but he was duped by a woman known as kissing Kate Barlow. Once upon a time, the woman and other criminals were infamous for kissing their captives before they died, leaving a trail of bright lipstick on their faces. Stanley I was a pig farmer in a Latvian village, when he fell in love with his owner's daughter, he decided to consult the local fortune teller, Madame Zeroni, to learn how to win the girl's heart. The woman told him to forget about the ridiculous girl, and travel to America, where he would meet his fate. Stanley, who was madly in love, ignored the fortune teller and went to the girl's father, to ask for her hand and heart, but was turned down. He then returns to the fortune teller. To appease the girl's father, the fortune teller recommended the lad take a small piglet, and bring it up the mountain every day to drink from the stream. The pig would then grow larger and larger, until it could be handed to the father in exchange for his blessing. After some time, Stanley did as he was told and returned to his beloved's house with the gift. But, as the fortune teller had predicted, the girl was a fool. She couldn't decide between Stanley and an ugly man who handed her a pig. Disappointed by the girl's folly, Stanley chooses to take the fortune teller's first piece of advice, and travel to America, where a new life awaits him. But the unlucky man entirely forgets his vow to the woman. He was to bring Madame Zeroni to the same mountain, and give her a sip from the stream, in order for her to gain strength and youth as well. Since he didn't follow the fortune teller's instructions, she cursed his entire male family forever. After a few days of working at the camp, Stanley becomes accustomed to the local norms and hard work. He realizes that none of the boys understand why they are digging holes. Stanley writes a letter to his parents, he lies about how well he is doing at camp, so that his family will not be concerned. On another day of digging, Stanley discovers a fossil and brings it to mother, hoping to be granted time off for his discovery. However, the psychologist assures him that the warden is unconcerned with fossils. He also informs him that there was once a lake on this property, and that the land surrounding it belonged to the warden's grandfather. The story transports us back in time to when the warden's grandpa governed the town. Sam sells magic onions, which he claims cure all diseases and keep deadly lizards away. Sam has a thing for Miss Catherine, the local teacher, so he brings her a sack of onions. She gives him a jar of peaches she gathered herself in exchange. All the male in town are secretly in love with the lovely instructor, therefore, they are envious. X-Ray approaches Stanley, and tells him that the next time he finds anything, he should bring it to him. Stanley is ultimately accepted into the club, and he is given the nickname Caveman. Stanley laughs as he reads a return letter from his mom. Zero inquires as to what he is laughing at, and then acknowledges that he is unable to read. 
he requests Stanley to teach him to read, but Stanley refuses, claiming that he is fatigued from digging every day, and has no time for it. Stanley discovers something that resembles a shell casing, with the initials KB at the excavation site. It is discovered by X-ray and presented to Mother, so she can have the day off. The camp warden, who turns out to be a woman, arrives at the camp after hearing about the discovery. She gives X-ray the day off, and instructs the others to completely excavate the entire site. Back in time, Sam offers Catherine her distinctive peaches, in exchange for repairing the damaged roof of her school. Catherine accepts, and the couple gradually begins to connect. She is courted by the town's owner after a night school class, but she is flatly rejected. Sam and Catherine are experiencing romantic feelings. Despite the fact that the repair work has been completed, the couple cannot stop thinking about each other. Sam plucks up the confidence to go to Catherine's residence and kiss her. The resentful town owner notices this, and tries to exact his revenge by torching the school. Catherine flees to the local sheriff for help, but he simply mocks her, claiming that her sweetheart would be killed shortly. Sam is shot right in front of Catherine in his boat. After some time, the girl returns to the sheriff to avenge her lover's death. She murders the man, and then kisses him on the cheek. Her journey as an outlaw under the alias Kissing Kate then begins. The town owner's granddaughter has absorbed her grandfather's bad temper, and forces youngsters to dig day and night for Kate's wealth. Mr. Sir transports and distributes water to the boys at the dig site. A young magnet takes a bag of seeds from the warden's truck, while he is out of sight. Mr. Sir detects the loss immediately and returns to the dig site. Everyone starts throwing the bag of seeds back and forth in a hurry, and it spills at Stanley's feet. Despite the dire circumstances, he refuses to hand up any of the squad members and accepts responsibility. Mr. Sir brings the youngster before the warden, to be punished for stealing. Instead of the expected punishment, the warden chastises the boy for diverting him from his digging. Stanley finds posters in the warden's office depicting the search for kissing Kate, before returning to the desert. When he returns to the dig, the guys see him as a hero, and Zero digs him a hole. In appreciation, he offers to teach Zero how to read and write. He recalls his prior find, and concludes that what he previously discovered in the hole was not a bullet shell, but a tube of lipstick with Kate Barlow's initials during their conversation. Zero reveals his true name, Hector Zeroni. The boy is linked to Madame Zeroni, who cursed the Stanley family many years ago, but the boys had no idea that their futures were intertwined, and that they will remain friends. Zero tells his pal about his mother, who abandoned him in the park and then vanished. Zigzag runs into Stanley during their lunch break. When the warden arrives at the dig, he hears from the boys that Zero is helping Stanley, with part of his labor in exchange for teaching him to read. Stanley tries to persuade the grown-ups that the boy is clever, and should be tutored, to which mother responds with a sardonic laugh. He tells Zero that he is so ignorant that he is unaware of his own stupidity. Zero has had enough, and strikes mother in the face with a shovel, before fleeing into the depths of the desert. Stanley, distraught about his friend's departure, recalls his grandfather's stories about Yelnot first, surviving 16 days in the desert when Kate Barlow robbed his wagon. He discovered salvation in a spot called God's Finger, but due to his stress, he could never explain where it was to anyone. The next day, Stanley decides to go in search of his escaped comrade. He takes the warden's car and drives it briefly, before falling into one of the holes. He continues on foot, deep into the desert, as the rest of the squad cheers him on. He finally finds Zero after hours of traveling through the desert under the scorching sun. The boy has been hiding beneath an old boat that used to belong to Sam. There's also a jar of peach jam inside that the boy split. Stanley observes a peak in the distance that resembles a raised thumb. The boy recognizes it as Yelnot First's mountain from the narrative. To find safety, the guys resolve to climb the mountain. Stanley climbs the rocks, grips a flimsy rock ledge, and slips away. Zero hands his friend a shovel so he can climb up with it. This causes the youngster to suffer severe hand injuries, but he saves Stanley's life. The guys almost reach the summit together, but Zero falls and is unable to walk any further due to exhaustion. During a break, Hector admits to his pal that he landed up at the camp because of him. Zero, fearful of being held accountable, stole the identical sneakers from his orphanage, and tossed them off the bridge, right onto Stanley. The boy passes out after his confession. Stanley bears no ill will against his friend, and carries him the rest of the way on top of himself. As a result, he unwittingly fulfills his great-grandfather's promise to Madame Zeroni, transporting her great-grandson to the creek at the top of the mountain. The happy duo drinks from the creek, and eats the same miracle onion Sam cultivated just next to it. Meanwhile, Stanley's father discovers an effective treatment for the terrible foot odor, by blending peaches and onions. 
The Stanley family curse has now been lifted for good. When Stanley's lawyer arrives at the camp, he informs the warden that the youngster is innocent, and must be restored to his family. The warden conceals the fact that Stanley has been missing from camp for days, and may already be dead. We travel back in time one more time. Kate Barlow discovers Sam's yacht and sits down, recalling her last boyfriend. The woman is approached by the town's owner, who attempts to persuade her to reveal the location of all the stolen treasure. Kate, on the other hand, allows herself to be bitten by a yellow-spotted lizard and takes the secret to her grave. Since then, the owner's descendants have searched unsuccessfully through the old lake's property in search of the treasure. Stanley and Zero are the first to arrive at the excavation site in the morning, and dig out the treasure trove where Stanley discovered the lipstick tube. The warden, along with her accomplices, tracks them down, and plots to steal the prized treasure from the boys. Venomous lizards have flocked around the boys and the treasure chest. Later, a lawyer, together with the police, arrives at the dig site. The warden accuses the lads of stealing the treasure and fleeing, but Zero notices the name Stanley Yelnots on the trunk. Stanley and the riches are released from the camp, but the warden and her followers are imprisoned. For the first time in a hundred years, it rains in the desert. Stanley bids farewell to his joyful gang, and returns to town with Zero. Stanley discusses his great treasure with his family and Zero at home. Hector eventually locates his mother, who has been searching for him the entire time. The lads become neighbors, and invite all of the camp youngsters who have been freed to come visit. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.